Perpetual darkness lingered at the top of the world. Thick ice, frigid air, and snow covered in the lifeless mountainscape. However, what? the endless nights did not go unchallenged. A single source of light illuminated the sky and drove back into the darkness, nestled down between two of the snow-covered mountains. A little cottage sat with the puffy, blowing smoke rising from its chimney. Ignoring the fact that the nearest civilization was thousands of miles away to the casual eye, the house was simply a warm and welcoming home. Still, one might ask themselves, what an odd thing to have such a bleak place. How could such a thing come to be? Like most things found in the North Pole, not everything is as it appears. The land was unforgiving and cruel, and it could take your life within minutes. Only a select number of creatures were given permission to live in this harsh and relentless wilderness. All the others who entered this domain did it on their own accord, as much as the residents of this tiny little home. However, these individuals were like no other, and with a little bit of magic at their disposal, they lived a happy, joyful lives. At first glance, it would appear as if it's nothing more than a simple, ordinary home inhabited by an elderly couple who loved each other dearly. If this were your conclusion, you would be mistaken. In reality, a magical secret existed below. For the small house that was more than the meets of the eye, the little house was not just a home, but the tip of the mystical workshop hidden beneath the ice. For centuries, children around the world found joy from their efforts from the hidden workshops. All year round, tiny magic hands toiled up and labored to create toys and playthings for all the good children in the world. Elves, the last of the magical creatures from old, dwelt from its walls used from their mystical creature nature to create wondrous and joyous full things for Christmas morning. Three days after the winter solstice, the old man would put on his heavy coat and boots to take the air and deliver Chris Christmas joy to every last child. Like everything in the cosmos, there must be a balance. For every night there must be a day, every beginning has an end. And with every kind child, there was a naughty little boy or girl to be found. Far below the bright lights, singing and happy elves, creating the building, new fantastic toys. There was another workshop. There was warmth of the hard stones that couldn't be reached. While the purpose of the upper workshop was to bring happiness, the other was dark and sterile, and it too had a purpose. It was there where the masses of cheap, easily broken toys were made. There was no love put into these objects, when never a child's eyes brightened with such wonder and awe upon seeing his gifts on Christmas morning. In his wisdom, this old man knew even a very naughty child should not be forgotten during this time of goodwill. However, the old man was no fool and had no desire to waste his resources on such unsatisfying tasks. This responsibility was handled to be banished and exiled elves that are inhabited the deepest bowls of the workshop. With those selfish hearts and greedy desires stripped off the mormality, they were wasted away into the dark with only trinkets and flimsy materials to pass the time. A graffitia sat in the poorly lit corner of the tattered workbench. His focus was entirely devoted on the old and worn out piece of brass in his hands. The clangs of the his hammer hitting metal reins out and echoed throughout the dark halls and passageways. He pounded the brass sheet relentlessly until the metal slowly began to surrender and the shape bend to Efreda's design. Suddenly the hammer flew out of his hand, mad shell elf's grasp. He ex examined his limp hand, trying to will it back to control. Fury filled his heart as he watched the necrotic flesh salt off by his bony hand. He didn't have much time. His other hand was weak and was still capable of grasp. He reached into his toolbox and removed a long warp nail and slapped it into the back of this paralyzed hand. He pushed a nail head until its tip broke off through the skin, merged through his palm. Immediately, he had surged up and shot up his arm. The thick, rigid tendons loosened within his hand, giving him the temporary use of digits once more. The elf picked itself up with his hammer and resumed molding the shape of the brass plate. 
With each impact upon the brass, he poured his rage into his creation. How ironic that the product of his tireless work was meant for those he hated the most. The, his disorientating body was fading fast. He possessed just enough magic to fuel the curse he would cast upon the object. When finished, his gift would be placed with the other fair junk toys and cheap trinkets. It would make his way to them to find a child on Christmas morning. The curse will take hold and slowly begin tearing apart their lives. It will channel their existence back to them and reunite this mortality. The object would soon pass from one child, then to another, century after century. He had just enough packet, pat magic to lift his invoked curse. Egrifa had once lived and once worked above, like any other elf before him. He loved nothing more than to create beautiful and wondrous toys and gizmos. However, in his heart, he wished he could keep some of his creations for himself. One day his eyes fell open upon the magic music box his friend Delilah had created. The music box was extraordinary. It was meant as a gift at to the king's firstborn. It was magnificent, crafted in oak wood, and bore elaborate gold design to each of its sides. When opened the figurine of three children danced in hand into a beautiful lullaby around a magnificent Christmas tree. Ergervaita had never seen desired such anything ever in his life. It filled his heart with jealousy. He became resentful to his precious rare treasure that would go into underdying human infant. The little girl didn't deserve it. It should go to him. He fought so. So under cover of darkness, Egra then, then slipped into the work area and took the music box. Unable to sleep and anxious to put the finishing touches on this prized creation, Dehila then decided to return to the workshop. To his surprise and shock, he caught the elf attempting to steal the magic music box. Dehila was enraged, for greed and fevery amongst elves was extraordinarily offensive not to be tolerated. Ergfergra begged his friend not to report his transgression, but Dehila was unmoved by the pleas and turned to tell the others of the Ergfergra's crime. Soon, Egra did nothing and did the only thing left to do. He grabbed the hammer, brought it down to his friend's head over and over until there was no more left within the broken remained of the body. Despite the metallic efforts to conceal his crime, he could not escape the sight and wisdom of the old man. Humiliated and his disordered, the elf was banished from the workshop and his precious music box was taken from him and given to the little princess. Stripped off his normality, Egraita was cast into the cold and to the dark corridors of the workshop to spend his remaining days, never to create a beautiful thing again. As the seasons passed, he, his hatred for children grew and ate away at his insanity. He gritted his teeth knowing that the children of men were giving everything he had nothing. He hunched over his work, Egra feverishly worked to complete his masterpiece. He stared down at the anvil and hammered down the brass. Each strike brought the face of a child into his mind. It lives within warmth. The blunt hammer formed into the metal of the brow of the hollow cylinder. It stuffed its face with sweets and treats. Stumpy legs were welded into place. It gets everything it asks from mommy and daddy. A malformed head crooked his ears took shape. It gets everything its little heart desires. The brass surface was succumbed to the debris and grime. It gets everything it wants. Small turquoise stones were asphyxiated onto the brass body. I hate it! One glimmering red ruby stone was bound to be on the left side of the figurine's head. I hate it! Finally, the second red ruby was embedded into the surface. All the faces on the other side. I hate them all! In the glow of the fire, Egfra then held up the brass figurine. It was a disturbing presentation of a rabbit. Its body was latest crisscross brass strips to be jeweled within pale blue turquoise stones at the each intersection. Its head was malformed and he gave the impression of a, of a dead thing instead of the placement of the rabbit of full of life. His place was an atrocious thing upon a silver locket that contained a mirror on both each of the hinged inner sides. With the rabbit figurine facing one of the mirrors, 
He carefully opened the vial that was at a clear fluid. It was limp, limp from an elf, the source of magic that flowed through their bodies like that blood from the second set of the unique arteries found within its own circulatory system and pumped with very special second heart. Only a few tiny drops fell out of the vial. It splashed onto the figurine, mirrored, locked it, illuminated them with a the golden glow. Ephra glows his eyes. It spoke with the words of the warm hood in his, even his eleven tongue. The clear liquid turned black and stained to the surface with both rapid saute and, and the silver locket. The glow then turned deep purple. That slowly faded, pleased with the outcome. He gently placed a cloth over the object, without making eye content to obscure it, its sight ever so carefully, placed it in a small box, decorated with holiday cheer. Finished with his work, Ephra then turned to his leave, pushing past the corpses of several elves hanging upside down from the support beams of the other sh workshop. Their lifeless bodies were drained completely of every last drop of mythical, magical lymph from its slit throats. Egrifra's calculation had been correct. He had just enough magic to fuel the curse that planned on the object. The mad elf smiled and he began to laugh. For the first time in a very long time, Ephra's Eta's heart was filled with anticipation at the approach of a Christmas morning. The one little girl sat in the large pile of torn wrapping paper from so many gifts she had found under the Christmas tree. On the morning of December 22nd, Gabby awoke earlier than everyone else. She went downstairs to glare at the many presents that continuously tempt her. It was as if they teased her with such a mocker every time she looked at the colorful and beautiful wrapping paper. She would receive such terrible scolding from her parents, but she couldn't wait any longer. At first she would be the only one gift she would open, then it became two, and then another, and another. Before she knew it, all of her presents had been opened, despite getting everything she asked for. The desire for still more was still not satisfied. When Gabby stood still, a small box at the base to the Christmas tree caught her eye. She could have sworn it had not been there. The wrapping paper was worn and yellowed with age, written in big letters that it said with a tag, it said to Gabriella. It was like no other, and she surely knew she would have seen it before now. Puzzled, she removed the wrapping paper and found the box that contained a smaller sealed box with a scroll. She opened it, the scroll, and read, Congratulations, lucky one. You are the proud owner of Peppy, the rabbit. Peppy loves you and will be your best friend in the whole wide world. Peppy is like a friend like no other, and he will give you everything your heart desires. To Peppy's best friend, Peppy's best friend, you must listen to him and never disobey the following instructions. One, place Peppy on his locket, face in the mirror. Never look Peppy Pepe in the eyes. He is ever so bashful and only likes to see you through his mirror. You may ask everything of Pepe three times. In three days at three time, he will grant you all that you have asked for him. For never look Pepe in the eyes. It bears repeating. He does not like it and will be upset if you disobey this rule. Remember, lucky boy or girl, Pepe loves you. He loves you more than anything else in the whole wide world. Pepe will make sure that no one ever hurts you again, and if you love Pepe, you will listen to him and do whatever he asks you. Pepe loves you, and no one can ever come between you and him. Pepe loves you.